So you're walking along a road and you come across a cave. It definitely wasn't there the last time you were here. Or you're trying to find this dam your friend has been telling you all about. But where is it? Oh, right, that explains it. So, what's in a name? You wouldn't think twice about the names of most places. Some are just a bit harder to pronounce, like Mamungu Kumpurankujanya Hill, which in Pitandara roughly translates to place where the evil spirit urinates. And others might cause you to raise an eyebrow. But the names we give to places, even the seemingly weird ones, convey their significance and history and, more often than not, a sense of identity. The first non-Indigenous names came from early marine explorers. Sailing south from Indonesia, Dutchman Willem Janssen gave Queensland many names. Some that still survive today include the Gulf of Carpentaria and Cape Kiwia, where he turned again back to Indonesia. After further exploration from fellow countrymen, the Dutch named this new land New Holland. Then came the English. In 1770, on his first Pacific voyage, Captain James Cook assigned more names to the East Coast. Some were straightforward, some honoured various high-ranking people, and some reflected the ship's personal trials. Another English explorer, Matthew Flinders, came along a few years later and circumnavigated the country. Flinders referred to the whole country by the name Europeans had been using for centuries for a hypothetical continent to the south, Terra Australis Incognita, but not really unknown anymore. His preference, though, was a shortened version, Australia. And after formal European settlement, groups of surveyors came through, giving names to rivers and mountains and other landmarks. Like Captain Cook did, a lot of places were named after people. Lake Eyre was named after the explorer, Edward John Eyre, who was the first person to lay eyes on it. And most of our capital cities are named after people. Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, Darwin and Hobart. But well, some names are just strange. If you've got nowhere else to go, well, you could try nowhere else. Speaking of Tassie, if your postcode is 7112, you're living in Eggs and Bacon Bay in Tasmania. While naming places after breakfast foods might seem an interesting choice, it's actually named after these flowers found in the area. On the New South Wales coast, north of Newcastle, you'll find Yes I Know Rock. Yes, a rock called Yes I Know, said to have been named after the last words of a fisherman who was washed from said rock. Orange and banana don't grow either of those fruits. One was named after the Prince of Orange, and one was named after a bull. When two explorers failed to glimpse the ocean from a summit of the Great Dividing Range, they dubbed the poor mountain they were standing on Mount Disappointment. Victoria also has a Mount Terrible, Mount Despair, and Mount Hopeless, so make of that what you will. And if you've ever wanted to go to the other side of the moon, you can. All it takes is a ticket to WA. Then there's the names that seem rude, but really are quite innocent. Off the coast of WA, you'll find Intercourse Island. No, not that type of intercourse. Captain Philip Parker King had what must have been a great chat with some native islanders. Some other strangely named islands include Shag Island and Booby Island, but it's not really that strange at all. They're named after the birds which frequent them. You know, shags and boobies. It may seem like we're a country of knobs, but only if you mean knob as in a rounded hill or mountain. And yes, for sure we're full of knobs. Down south in the Bass Strait, you'll find Prickly Bottom and a whole lot of other bottoms. Again, not what you're thinking. A bottom is a low-lying land adjacent to a river. Several of these names are a marker of white European settlement, but a lot of the names we still use today can be traced back to their indigenous origins. Our naming practices are very often reflective of really, really practical concerns, practical information. So a name could describe the shape of something, or the particular people who live there, or the animals, or plants, or activities that might go on. So for example, the city that I'm in now, Canberra, is derived from a Ngunnawal word, Cambri, which was meeting place. Noosa is from a Kabi Kabi word, which means shady place. Geelong is drawn from a Wathaurong word, which is the word for tongue, because that's the shape of the bay. Kananara means big water in the local Mirawong language. Kuji comes from Kuja, meaning place of stinking seaweed. The name for the Yarrow River came from surveyor John Holderwedge, a Wadarung speaker, after being asked what the cascading waters were called, simply said Yana Yana, meaning it flows. But there's also some more serious history behind some names. It's important for us not to hide from our history, all of it. It's important for us not to hide from our dark history, particularly. People ask themselves, well, why is that street called Boundary Street? and come to understand that that was 
the boundary beyond which Aboriginal people were not permitted to pass. They become really important points of learning for people. So can we still change the names of places? Yes, there are some strict guidelines in place, but essentially any community member can submit suggestions for name changes, or even to name a geographic feature which doesn't have an official name yet. In the last few decades, there's been a push to recognise more Indigenous names around the country by giving places dual names. It's a way to recognise their validity and acknowledge their importance. This big rock is known as Uluru Ayers Rock, and Lake Eyre is officially known as Kati Thunder Lake Eyre. With a bit of investigation, they will find out something wonderful and enriching about the place that they live, just simply by asking questions about Indigenous languages, so it's a really important thing for people to do. So, what's in a name? Turns out, quite a lot. There's a bunch of links in the description box to some resources online which can help you find out more about place names, including the Gazetteer of Australia, which is pretty much the database of the whole country. Check it out and let us know any weird place names that you come across.